Um, God bless you today. This is Reverend Rudy Henry from He Who Says One Life Saves Rules Ministries. Um, I'm reading from this book, Land Unknown, Health Dominion, B.W. Melvin. Um, I'm going to read it as, you know, I'm going to read from it today. Gradually, the busy sounds of a hospital began filling my ears. I awoke coughing and reached for the um, cup of ice next to my hospital bed. I was refreshingly, it was refreshingly, slowly my sense began to return from the foggy vapor. I'm a Tucson, not Virginia. That's right. The doctor was in my room along with the nurse. How do you feel? Like my insides are on fire. Nurse, please give me, nurse, please give Mr. Melvin a little more for pain. Doctor, I'm not in a cube, am I? No, you're in the hospital. You need to rest. Your heart rate is unsteady, but improving. Relax. Um, you will be here for a while. The nurse began injecting more pain medication into my IV line. I do not want to sleep, Doc. I don't want, I don't want to sleep. Rest. This is not a cube. Don't let me return to that awful place. Rest, Doc. I can see my mother fries tomato plants. Um, what did you give me? Something for pain. Relax. Chapter 2. Trish was ripe. Um, the tomatoes were ripe. Jay and I were waiting in ambush by my mother's prized tomato plants. We were 10 years old. I see him. Old briar-faced duck. Hi. Till he gets closer then we'll let him have it. Jeremy Chauncey was an ugly kid. We called him Old Briar Face due to his prickly face and large spiky ears. He was used to walk or hunched over, gazing at his feet while he walked. Every kid in the neighborhood picked on him because he was different. We selected the fattest tomatoes for the job, juicy ones. Several lay out at our feet. A few we held against our sides, waiting, throwing arms ready. He, he, is he in range? Yeah, we sprang into action. Right missiles launched into the sky. The first volley missed, splashing against the sidewalk. Near his feet, Jeremy did not look up. He moped along, uh, as was his uh, norm. Fire. Red tomatoes soared high into the air. One, two, three. Four and five in quick succession splat. They found the target. Brian, Jay, uh, I'll get you for this. We laughed. The kid was the slowest runner in town. More red fruit met his anger advance. It was time for one last volley and then retreat. More tomatoes arched into the sky. I can bear my mom. I can hear my mom walking briskly up from behind me. Am I dreaming or is that the nurse? Ryan, what happened to all my tomatoes? Don't, don't know, Mom. Maybe Jeremy stole them. Brian, what happened to all my tomatoes? Wake up, Mr. Melvin. Time to try to draw more blood for the lab. I hope it's not thick like before. Remember me, Bonnie? Jolted, fully awake by the nurse. I mumbled, yes, I do. She was. The doctor says rest, and then everyone keeps... Well, waking me. Rest in a hospital, it's impossible. Sorry, my job. This will sting. Can you hand me some water in that glass after you are done? Yes, here you go. Don't worry, I'll be back um, soon. Bye. Bonnie left the room, um, sipping water. My stomach began to throb with mild pain. Another nurse walked in and smiled. Good to see you. Good to see you up. I have a delicious liquid diet for you today. Uh, here it is. We need to restore your electrolytes. And they're in this little bag. Hold on while I change your IV and reset the drip. After she departed, I lay in bed watching dinner dribble into my arm. The pain medication began making me drowsy again. I did not want to sleep for fear of walking again in that horrible place that I had returned from only hours before. The wretched place with all those dreaded cubes. Was that, domin was that dominion real? Was it a dream? No, it had to have been real. I did not want to sleep. 
but the medication could not be fought off, and I drifted back into memories of another time, searching for answers to why all this was happening to me. There I was, so very young. My mother was placing me into a shopping cart while she shopped for groceries. I sat like a king with my feet dangling freely from my perch atop the cart, my cheeks all sticky from lunch. I was a cute kid, but then I saw a toy on the aisle placed just high enough so that a cute kid like me could see it. Well, hell, I howled when my mother told me we could not afford the toy. More silly visions of my youth danced within my head before I groggily woke again. Maybe the past had the answer I sought. Memories sometimes can help enlighten why certain things, certain things occur. Being a young boy sitting in a shopping cart screaming for a tour reminded me of what Trish said not so long ago. Selfishness comes without instructions, right? Was she right? Had what I had experienced happened due to my blind selfishness? Did this nightmarish event come about because of how my old friends and I mistreated Trish? I remember the event well. It occurred at the same shopping center where my mother and I used to go. My mind melted back towards memories of Trish and what I did. Hunting regrets are hard to live with. So hard. Um, it was very... It was nearing the last day of high school, Mitch, Jay, Jack, Mike, and I used to spend our time hanging out at the local shopping center. We went there to meet up with all our friends, seeking adventure, adventurous things to do. Trish would often show up carrying armloads of pamphlets. She came with a group from Campus Crusade for Christ, looking for the heathens to convert to Christianity. We were the local heathens and proud of it. It was the worst. I was the worst convert, converted as a child, but now fallen. A proud a, 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 atheistic agnostic willing to challenge any Christian attempting conversion. For sport, we teased these people unmercifully. Now Tris was different. We loved talking with her. She was unlike her preach, preachy male counterparts, and she was very attractive. Maybe that's why we enjoyed her company. She was a knockout. Trish saw us standing in the square and came over to us. Hi guys, here is another track you may like to read. Thanks Trish, what's this one about? Sin original? No? Hey Bones, your favorite topic. Bri, you want to argue again? Depends, original sin you say I would. Well, how can sin be original when a Great, senseless, sinless God is supposed to have created everything. He must have created sin, pain, suffering, and the devil. This is, of course, of such as a malevolent entity really exists. Now you're going to tell us that God came to fix all of this if we become born again. How can this be when God is the author of all things? Look at all the wars, crimes, and hate in the world. You expect me to believe I am a sinner? When supposedly God is the one who picks one person for heaven and another to hell, what is the real sin? sin who, who is the real sinner here? I thought I had trust this time. My logic seemed flawless. My buddies were chiming in and crackling jokes about it. But Trish was unlike other Christians, and she always answered in ways you least expected. We admired her for this. Amen. Um, I want to say something about a land unknown. How's Dominion, B.W. Melvin? Um, Jesus is Lord. And the, the thing about it, you don't have to go to hell. Yeah. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. But this is the good news. The wage of the sin is death. But there's a way out. You can turn to Jesus Christ today. Uh, maybe you're a homosexual. Maybe you're a lesbian. Maybe you're a murderer. Maybe you're a jailbird or a Muslim or an atheist or a Jehovah Witness. The good news is this, Jesus died on the cross for you. He took your sins, he took your 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 iniquities and your sickness. So he, he he's a, he's alive. He's the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And hell yeah, is a real place, but you don't have to go there. You can repent today. You can say Jesus Christ, I believe you. I don't want to go there. I accept you. I receive you. Wash my sins away. Live in my heart. And change me. And surely the Lord Jesus Christ will. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Um, that's the good news. Choose to receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your life today. As I read from this book, actually the Lord laid it on my heart, a land unknown, hell's dominion. Um, but we will go there if we reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. So receive the chant. You know, when Jesus Christ is calling, you say yes to Jesus Christ. I will continue to read from this book throughout the year. It's, I don't know how long it's going to take me. That doesn't matter. Um, I will continue and pray for people's salvation and that, will, that they won't go to hell. They won't go to this place where this man saw and they would receive the Messiah and be written in the last book of life. But if we reject the gospel of Jesus Christ, hell is a real place. We will spend eternity there. But the good news is this. Jesus Christ made a way where there is no way. Amen. God bless you today and you have a good day.